the demo for today, I'm working on sharing with you um, some cypress trees. Okay, so these cypress, there's lots of different varieties of cypress trees. I live in Florida and we have another variety of cypress tree. But these two are, um, the tall skinny one is an Italian cypress. And then the one with the large trunks is a Monterey cypress, which is on the west coast of the United States. They grow on the rocky outcroppings and on the coastline there. And I'll share with you um, how to create those because they're some of the more popular types of trees that are used in landscape painting. Okay, last week I did that really pretty flowering wisteria tree. So I'm kind of keeping with that theme and we're going into a different type of tree. In this case, it's an Italian cypress and a Monterey cypress. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll get overhead. Okay, so first thing I want to share with you is getting the correct shape for this Italian cypress. Now the Italian cypress has a very compact um, teardrop shape to it and then a short trunk is shown at the bottom whereas the Monterey cypress has tall kind of twisted it's not much different from a Florida cypress other than um, the trunks get so harshly windblown because they grow on the west coast you California people know what I'm talking about um, in the Monterey area especially and there is a very uh, famous cypress tree in that area actually on the um, coastline near Pebble Beach which is called the Lone Cypress um, which just sticks out on this rocky outcropping in the ocean um, or next to the ocean and it gets wind whipped something awful so they the trunks actually kind of spin a little bit or twist a little bit as the trees are growing because of that wind um, pushing and the, the the needles and the branches and everything tend to grow um, like they're blowing in the wind away from the shore so back towards the land so we're going to create both of these tonight okay so let's start first with our um, our Italian cypress okay so I just want to kind of sketch that shape out so you can see so I'm first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a light center line right here okay i'm going to make that darker so y'all can see it on the camera because it is a little washed out all right and then i'm going to create i'm going to go about two fingers on either side of that line down towards the base and that's the widest part okay and then here at the top it just comes up to a compact pointed top Okay, so these are typically ones that you'd see in like an Italian landscape. They're very tall and skinny and they grow um, in kind of groups. A lot of people use them to line their driveways or streets to block the wind and things like that. Um, all right, so here we have this peak at the top. It's kind of like a pine tree shape. Right, it's pointed, but they're very compact and they're upright growing, okay? So hopefully you can see that. And then they come in rather sharply at the trunk and then the trunk is a sturdy kind of thick wide base like that, okay? So that's our basic, you don't see much of the trunk. That's the shape for that, okay? And then for the... Um, the Monterey Cypress, I'm going to come down a little more because I want to have a little more room down here to, to create this. So we've got the land right here. And then you have a very wide trunk and they tend to split low. Right, so you have, especially those that survive the winds and things. And so then you might have one or two, or excuse me, two or three um, large trunks that split off and then they grow up. Um, fairly straight with not a lot of branches coming off okay so the branches that you do see tend to support the the greens at the top and then um, they break off below okay so all I really need for this is I want to make sure I have a higher my higher one is going to be up here like this I don't want to do too dark a pencil because I want to make sure my paint comes over it okay and they grow in kind of layers and then this one over here we're going to split off just a little let's bring this here 
we'll have a V right there and then we'll bring this down. Okay. And then we'll have the um, green area here is going to grow just a little bit lower and we're going to come way over there. And it's going to come right behind this upper. So they tend to have um, flat habits for growth. And then, um, like I said, uh, just a few branches. Okay. All right. So hopefully you can see that pretty well. It's just to get things kind of laid out. So I know where I'm going now. Remember last week I was sharing with you all about this, um, the big mop. I think I no, actually I did use this half inch mop. So we don't really have a foliage brush. We have scruffies in the one stroke painting, um, toolkit, right? but they tend to be a little wide and um, oval shaped flat. Whereas this brush really works well for foliage um, where you can get a narrower area on the head and it's rounded. So you can get without pushing too hard, you can get just a little bit of color come off or push a little harder and then you get more of that color coming off. But when you press down on, the paper or surface, it makes a rounded top instead of the flat like our scruffy does. So I found, and this is a little stiffer than most um, mops that I have seen or that we have used in some of the previous endeavors with mops in the one stroke community. Um, it's, it's more compact, the bristles are shorter, and I feel like these are a little bit stiffer, just slightly, but they still make a nice um, foliage brush. Okay. So thank you guys for all the nice comments I'm seeing. I appreciate that. And what I want to do now is let's put out our colors. So the cypress trees tend to age and turn gray with the weather. So we need some medium gray and of course brown. So I'm using a bark brown. Yes, I'm smacking it on my hands. If Julie's on, she's going to yell at me. <laughs> all right. So those are our trunk colors. And then I'm going to put out some sap green and citrus. Those are our dark and light values for our greens. All right. And then I need something to make my green just a little bit darker. I'm going to use some Prussian blue right here. Don't need a lot of that. And to make my light green a little brighter, I'm going to put out some daffodil yellow. So a brighter yellow. And I don't need much of that either. And then where I want some light reflecting value in my greens, I'm going to put a little bit of white. So we need some wicker white. And we're going to use some of that white with our tree trunks too. So I'm just going to put that right over there for now. Okay. So we've got our colors out. And I'm going to put out just a little bit of floating medium. I shouldn't need it. I didn't need it when I did my, my original. Um, I used water actually with the mop to get it damp like we would with a flat brush. Okay. All right. So let's first put out our trunks or stroke our trunk for our uh, Monterey Cypress. Okay. So I've got a number eight flat right here. I'm going to get that wet, lay it on my paper towel, and then we're going to load with the medium gray. And then I'm going to come over here and side stroke some of the bark brown. Okay. So this is a very short trunk. Now I'm going to come down with my camera so you guys can see a little better now that you've seen the layout of the colors, etc. Okay. So All right, so as I was saying, I'm putting in the light and dark, or the brown and the gray. That threw me off just a little. All right, and let's come down just a little closer. Maybe my camera will like that better if I'm closer. So now I want to side load just a little bit of white on my brown edge of my brush, okay? And I'm going to just touch a few little light edges. Okay, just a few little light edges in there. All right, so I added a little white in here to create a little lighter color on the left side. That's better. 
And then I'm just going to get a tiny little bit of the Prussian blue on my gray corner and add a little bit darker little streaks in there. Okay. And once it blends with that gray, it's going to look more like a darker value to, um, to the trunk. Okay. So that's that trunk. Now, while I have this brush loaded, I am going to go ahead and do the trunk on the Monterey Cypress. So I'm coming back to these colors. I'm going to get a little bit of white on that gray edge now. Okay. So what I want to do, just get a touch of medium and we're going to, so my light on this one is going to be on the right hand side. So we're just going to base this in first. I turned it around. There we go. Okay. So we've got that kind of gray base. Now I'm going to start the twist here in just a second, right after I get this based in here. Before I do that, I want to put my branches in. So it comes up and creates a, like a canopy of branches for these green um, I don't know if they're, I think they're kind of like a needle more so than a, than a leaf. Okay. So we just want to kind of add a few, a lot of this is going to be covered up with, um, the green. So just little chisel strokes coming up from here. And then at the end, I will come in with my script liner and add some small branches. Okay. So that's that side. And then we're going to come down on this side. Need some medium. There we go. Okay. These tend to grow in fairly rocky areas along the West Coast. I'm hoping one of my West Coast friends that's on here might be able to help me make sure I say these things correctly about these trees. And Teresa, if you know any better than I do about them, I've only been out there a few times to see how they grow, but Okay, so that's our main trunk set up there. And then I'm going to come side load a little more white on that gray edge. And then here's what we're going to do. As you're stroking this trunk, it makes, there's, like I said, just a little bit of a spin to the um, bark as the wind kind of rocks these or spin, twist them around a little bit. So just that little bit of a light drag with that side load of white on. You don't want to make them look like um, twisted candy or anything, but you do want to give them just a little bit of a spin. Okay, so see how that twists a little? <laughs> Thanks, Teresa. <laughs> All right. So then let's pull up a few more of these branches. They're kind of an evergreen, so they have like a pine sort of base to them. I'm going to get these ones in the back so that then I can put some of the greens over the top. 
Okay. And then up here, oops, I might have a few holding this piece up. So this is just that mix of um, bark brown and white and me or excuse me, bark brown and gray, medium gray, and then little bits of white. Okay, so you're just creating a little bit of movement in the tree trunk. All right. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put that brush in. Oops, I didn't mean to do that yet. Hold on. Let's get a little bit of the blue. I meant to add the blue. And so the Prussian blue with some gray down in here creates some darker areas here and there. Not a lot. Mix that little bit of Prussian blue with medium gray. Okay, and you can just add a few little darker indentations in the bark. And then a little more of the bark brown and gray with the blue and the brush. We want to get some ground down here. There we go. Okay. And like I said, these grow in rocky areas. They can be kind of gnarly, kind of bumpy in their habit. So... Don't make them too smooth. Give them a little bit of texture to the base. Okay. All right. So that's pretty good. It's probably not the best tree you've ever stroked, but like I said, we're creators, right? So just keep on keeping on. Okay. Now I can go ahead and put that in the water and I want to grab my script liner. Got some water in my script liner and I'm going to come and get the medium gray with the bark brown and just a tiny bit of the Prussian blue. And let's just back up here, just a hair. All right, so you're just kind of creating, I don't want black, but I want a darker gray value, okay? So here and there, you can just twist out some skinny little branches that didn't quite make it in this harsh environment. So they don't really have any greens or anything growing on them. They're just kind of dead branches. Little bits of brown. So and when you get up in here, there's lots of these holding up that canopy as well. And down here, there might be a few that are just stragglers hanging out the sides of the tree. But down close to the ground, there's not much. It's just trunk. Okay, so that's pretty good. Yes, they do have some pretty amazing root systems that they kind of come up and back down into the rocks and area around the base of the tree. It takes a lot to hold these into the ground and not let the wind whip them when they get those pretty strong winds coming through. Okay, so that's pretty good for those. I'm going to stop there. Now, what we want to focus on now is our foliage. So I'm going to work on first this um, Italian cypress on the left, and then we'll come in and do the um, tops of the Monterey cypress on the right. So I want to get my mop brush damp, lay that on paper towel. I'm not working with it wet, but I just need it damp slightly. Okay. Now I'm going to come in here and get some of my color. So to start with, I want a fairly dark base. Okay. 
and if this paint starts to act kind of dry for me then I'm going to come over here and get a little bit of medium. So I'm getting sap green for now and I'm going to get a touch of the blue. This is Prussian blue working that in. That's going to help me get just a little bit darker value. All right and then before I go in and start stroking this I want to tap my brush so it spreads my bristles apart. So if you can see that there we go. Okay so let's start up here you want to layer these so you're going to start at the top of the tree. There we go. So we're going to come right up here and touch just the tip and create that little bit of a point at the top. Okay, I'm going to, now that you've seen the colors, I want to come down closer so you can see the brush movement. Okay. All right, so I'm just picking up that sap green, a little bit of Prussian mixed in, tapping the brush on my palette before I come and start adding my color. All right, so this is what I'm doing. Brushes straight up and down, and I'm touching and flicking up slightly. Now, very slightly when you're up in this pointed area here because you want to keep that fairly narrow. But when I come down here, I can push a little harder. We're just kind of laying this color out here as an undercolor. The whole thing will be this, to start with, will be this dark green with that little bit of Prussian blue in there to make it darker, okay? So Prussian blue, sap, and we're gonna tap this out. All right, so see how when I'm doing that, it's creating light and dark areas on the tree. Yes, you do need to get one of these mop brushes. They're available at onestroke.com. Or if you want to add them to your order, if you're signing up for the classes and getting the paint kit, um, I can get the brushes for you and ship those out all together. They're $19.95 for the set of two. This is the half inch brush that I'm using right now. And then there's a three quarter inch brush also that I, we love both of them. They're great for backgrounds and doing washes of color. But I have found, I've been looking for a really good foliage brush that wasn't a scruffy because I, I love my scruffy, but it's, it's wide and flat and I wanted something that had more of a staggered um, scruffy, well, pointier end that I could get a little more control on without having to turn it on its side. Okay, so see how I'm just tapping this in and pushing up, flicking up as I'm doing that, okay? So touching and flicking a little more. Now I'm going to grab quite a bit of that blue. All right. And down here where it's darkest, you're going to see a little more of that green in there. I don't want the blue necessarily to show. It should be a blue green. Okay. So creating that rounded shape and everything is going up straight. I'm not going out at angles. Everything is straight up following that curved shape at the bottom, but it's going straight vertical. Okay, so now I've got all that color in there. You can see I left a few open spots even. And now I'm ready to start adding some of the light values. So in this case, on this tree, the light is on the left-hand side. That's how I did my trunk. So I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to wipe off that dark color on paper towel. And then I'm going to, whoop, that's really close. And then I'm going to come in here and get some light green on my brush, tap it out again, and then I want to tap just one corner into the sap. All right, so I have kind of two thirds of the light green and one third of the sap. Okay, and now I'm going to kind of divide my tree in half down the center line here um, because they're round trees. So you want to give it that round look or uh, impression of it being round by adding the light on one half. All right, so tip it towards the top of the brush and just very lightly tapping in that light color. Okay, so can you see that? Getting more of the light color on the top two thirds of my brush and tapping that in. So when I tap it out, see how it's just kind of busted apart a little bit, but there's plenty of paint in there. You don't want heavy paint, you're just adding little bits at a time. All right, and leaving some of that dark. All 
I'm letting it go just slightly past the edges, but can you see how it's creating those little tips on the branches? That's what I want this brush to do. And you can't get that with the scruffy, but you can with these mop brushes. So I guess I'm breaking the rules as far as how these are supposed to be used, but I am so happy that I have this now. All right, so see how that's creating those little points and tips like um, upright evergreens have. Straight up and down with the handle of that brush, just tapping that out and getting more of that light green. So now that I'm down here towards the bottom, I don't want to completely come down and make it all light on this side, but I do want to kind of tap it out at that rounded point and then leave it dark down here. Okay. All right. So now in just a few places, I'm going to tap in some light on the right hand side. So it doesn't look completely flat on that right side where it's in shadow or shaded. All right but just a few spots. All right, now with this same brush, I'm going to come and get on where I had the light green, I'm going to get some yellow. So I want you to see that I'm loading it um, kind of like you would a scruffy. You're tapping that in there into the yellow. All right, and still leaving it kind of busted apart. So now I want the yellow to be the highlight Okay, so just a few spots here and there. See how that's lightening up those tips? Okay. Don't create a pattern when you're tapping this in. So just go up and down, randomly move the brush around. See how that lightened up that left half of that brush? Now let me just get a tiny bit of white. This is the last step. I'm going to get a little bit of white on the very corner of the brush. And I just want a few highlights. All right. So little spots of white on probably the, the left third. All right. Start it to appear at the top. A little bit of white, so this is where the sun is hitting the harshest. All right, and see how that just lit that up right there. So you still see the yellows, and you've got this layer of colors, and you still have the, the texture and the edges. Um, you can come back in, like I see a few spots where I might want to make it a little bit rougher on the outside. Get a little bit of that darker green. Oh, I ruined it. That's okay. I fixed it. I puffed that out just a little too much and then it changed the shape. There you go. Okay, so that is everything that you would need to do to get a very nice looking Italian cypress using an eight flat and a half inch mop brush. Okay, so now let's look at these Monterey cypress, the tops. So I want to wipe off this brush, get rid of all that light color, and I'm going to come back and get the sap green and quite a bit of the Prussian blue. So sap and Prussian blue and tap it so you bust the, the bristles apart so they're more spread out and you'll get some foliage looking that way. All right, so we want to put in our dark areas first, which would be the undersides of the layers. These kind of grow in layers where they, it'll have like a, a dark, a, a wide layer and then it gets a little more narrow, a little more narrow, like they're in pancakes. <laughs> All right, so we're tapping in the dark here and let it kind of come down. And then I'm going to skip up here. We're going to put some dark in there. Right there. Right up here. I've got kind of a triple layer going here. Let's put a little bit over here. Okay. 
and then a little more of that blue with the dark green. We want the darkest value we can get with this. We're going to come over here and do the same thing for this one. So let's come down in here. We'll put some back in here. All right, and then up in here. Okay, so can you see the kind of triple decker layer there? Okay, so now let's pull that together a little more. Now let me wipe off that brush and I want to get a little bit of medium on the brush with what's left of my color and I'm going to kind of tap that into my brush and this is what we're going to do. We're going to tap in some of this back here. Kind of push it back behind the trunks of the trees and then you can take your flat and where it's gone over the tree trunk you can with a clean damp flat brush you can take some of that off or you could come back in and restroke these whichever works best for you okay all right wiping that off now i'm going to come and get sap green and then whoops my plate moved on me and then so sap green and the uh, citrus green sap on one half and then citrus on the other half okay so i'm splitting the brush this way just like if we were double loading i've got half dark half light okay my light color is going to be to my um, right hand side and then the dark is going to be to the left. Okay, so we're going to tap this horizontally. Oops, tip this up a little bit so you can see without the brush getting in the way. Horizontally on top of the dark. All right, and we're going to come in here. So my lighter color is on the right, but it's the wind is blowing it to the left. So it actually extends more to the left than to the right. So can you see how those are creating kind of a multi-layer look here? Coming above the dark or in between the dark, really. Half dark green, half light green. And you can kind of tap the corner to get it to lay over. Right in here. All right, now I'm going to pick up some yellow on that same brush and I'm going to go ahead and tap it right into the side that had the light green. All right, and we're going to come right up here at the tops of these lighter areas and tap in. This lighter foliage. So see how it's pushing the growth pabbit to the left. So you just keep tapping this light color in here. Let me get some of that citrus green on the other half of my brush here. more yellow. 
eyeliner. And I'm going to flatten this brush out just a little bit so that I can get a thinner oops, layer. Okay, now I'm not real happy with how this didn't let it blend so well with the dark. So I'm going to wipe my brush off. We're going to come back to get our dark value. And we're going to tap this up into some of those lighter areas there. A little bit darker. So that's the Prussian blue with the green. So what I'm showing you is that it's easy to correct and put some of those darker values back in there if um, it was a little too much um, layer upon layer didn't look right. All right, a little bit of the citrus. Oops. There we go. So that's giving it the look I wanted more so. Okay, so you're just kind of tapping that out. Got a little heavy in there, but that's still looking pretty good. Now I'm going to go ahead and get that white on that one yellow edge, and we're just going to add a few. Oops, let me get the yellow back first. And then the white. All right, and we're going to tap in some of those highlights. on the front where the light hits it the most harshly. Now there's one last thing I want to do to these because of the way that they grow. They do have some brown um, areas where the needles are starting to die. So I'm going to tap into a little bit of the bark brown. Okay, and we're just going to very lightly underneath add a few spots where it started to turn that light brown. Thank you guys. I appreciate you being on with me tonight and learning these trees. You don't want too much of that. Okay, so let's finish these up. I'm going to get my script liner. And I'm going to come back to my kind of gray and brown with a little bit of the Prussian blue mix in here. And then we can pull in some of these limbs in front. Okay. Now, if they're not showing, you can add a little bit of white in there. You just need a few. You don't want them to look too leggy. All right. So there you go. That's the look I was going for. So let's back out and just take a quick look at these. So there we have our Monterey Cypress where it's pushing the, the foliage growing to the left from the, um, from the wind whipping the trees. And then we have the um, Italian Cypress with its compact conical shape. So I hope that helps you. I hope you try and add some of these types of trees into some of your landscapes in your paintings and share when you've done these so we can see how they look. Um, and I hope you get that mop brush and start playing with it and learn a little more about it. Okay.